motivation i don't know whether the, that that correlates to just being younger and more naive and mm-hmm. afraid of, you know, not afraid of taking risks and that kind of thing or if it was because i was more insecure um around financially if you know i, mean, I was possibly younger and healthier or even um you know because i've been 10 years in the sort of consulting game uh-huh. whether i've just it's corporate burnout you know um and you know i, I wonder looking back whether i was I was definitely playing the status game, you know. I, you know, mm-hmm. didn't have a stable relationship and that kind of thing, and now I have. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, maybe I haven't got those drives as I once were. So I'm just really keen to get your thoughts and your perspectives on that. Yeah, it's a great question about, you know, motivation. How do you get the motivation back? So if you don't mind my asking, how old are you now? Because I'm curious what what was going on ten years ago. Just turned thirty. Okay, so you're 20 when you kind of felt the peak of your motivation. So were you in college at the time? What was kind of going on at that that moment in time in your life when you felt your motivation was better? I was at a decision in my life whether to go down the university path or, or go off on my own. I just transitioning from working freelance into, you know, um, the other side. Okay, that makes sense. And I'm curious, at that moment of time when you said your motivation was higher, what was your motivation at the time? Like, what were the driving factors when you were 20, uh, you know, motivated you to get up every day and, and work hard at that, that new gig that you got? As I said, I think it was a sense of, I come from sort of a working class background mm-hmm. um, and I had more money insecurities. Yeah. Um, so it was always this case of, you know, I see my dad work hard and that kind of thing. Mm. Um, and I, I, always, I never wanted to sort of be in issues in 50 years time, you know? That makes a lot of sense. Well, I, I do think sometimes, um, you know, depending on our um, circumstances growing up, family situation, uh, uh, whether it's to, to gain something that we didn't have or to not lose something that we did have, those can be big driving factors and motivators. Um, and then, yeah, it, obviously, uh, if you're kind of uh, around at a very exciting time and you want to sort of catch the trend, that can be a big factor as well. So it kind of makes sense what was what was driving you at the time. So first of all, I just want to normalize like what you're feeling. I, I don't think it's rare um, in, in, in any stretch of the imagination, right? Uh, Oftentimes, hunger, literally uh, and metaphorically, can be a huge motivator for people. Like, especially you know, when you're starting out, coming right out of university, um, unless you're very blessed in terms of your your parents giving you a lot, you, you kind of have to you know go out and fend for yourself as a man. Um, and I, I think that can be a, a very uh, motivating cause because if you don't, then you know you're going to be in dire constraints. And I, I think a lot of guys like you, even if they become even let's say middle class. Um, but you know, they're not going to be homeless. They're not going to go hungry. They're, they're not wanting, they, they built up a decent amount of savings, uh, or they're skilled enough that, you know, they, they're not afraid that they can be able to find work uh, after a decade of it. Um, yeah, that, that sort of fear and hunger does go away. Um, and that can be a little bit, um, demotivating in the sense that quite frankly, you become comfortable, right? This is the classic, uh, you know, survivor song and I, I have the tiger. He says, um, you know, so many times it happens so fast, you, you, you trade your passion for glory. Um, and, you know, the hunger that kind of what, uh, you know, originally motivates people, especially to pursue sort of athletic or professional greatness, uh, disappears when people become more and more successful. So that's the bad news. And, it, and it's kind of hard, quite frankly, to get that back, because unless you go back to dire straits, which I wouldn't really wish or recommend upon anyone, um, you know, you're not going to go back to being 20 and, and being as hungry in the same way. But here's here's the good news. So that is a very extrinsic motivator, right? Which is like, look, I need money to feed myself. Uh, I need money to establish myself uh, and kind of make my way in the world. And, you know, fortunately, you've gotten to a point where, um, you know, that's not the major factor. But the, I actually think that's a, that's a blessing and an opportunity in that you kind of move towards things that are a little bit more intrinsically motivated or as, as we talk about in ACT, a little bit more values aligned. I, I'm sure you still have some financial goals in terms of wanting to get to the next level, have even greater security, you know, whether it's purchase property, provide for your family, etc. So it, it continues to be a, a motivator, but it's certainly not the same level of hunger as before. So I guess my question to you is what, what, um, what are you looking forward to, right? Like if now if you look forward to the next 10 years, right? So from 30 to 40, 
um, what do you want in your life? Like you could almost envision it um, and look at yourself in 40 and almost imagine that we're having the same conversation a decade from now. And, I, and you almost call him back and you're very proud and you're like, hey, Dr. Cam, remember that conversation that we had a decade ago? Here's all the things that I've done since. Here's the person that I am and I've developed and grown into. What, what kind of person would you be at 40 and what, what would you have in your life? Definitely would like to be in a leadership position in terms mm -hmm. of leading and helping people um, and, and being more aligned in that sense. So a nagging feeling is that, you know, it's a short life and you want to make an impression here mm -hmm. while you're here, right? Um, so there's always that sort of driving away in the background in, in the, the sense of, you know, want to leave a mark while you're here. What kind of mark would you want to leave? Because I, I, I like where you're going with that, right? If I asked your friends or your colleagues 10 years from now, and, and we were almost like, imagine we're at like a, a celebratory banquet or an awards banquet and, and they were getting up and talking about you. What would they ideally say? That's a good question. I, this, I feel I, I, this is probably part of the struggle. I struggle to give you a definite answer mm -hmm. on these things, you know? And, and obviously you, you know, built up uh, close to a decade of experience there. So, so maybe there's something around there, which is like, you know, maybe the last decade of your life was, was very focused on individual skill development, right? Like becoming a really great uh, product designer, product design consultant. Um, and, and, you know, especially you also managed, um, mentioned kind of going into a leadership role. I think a lot of people talk about leadership, like it's, it's like a, the natural or inevitable thing to do. I think some people quite frankly are meant for leadership and some people are not, and there's no shame in how much leadership that you do. Uh, I think everyone quite frankly can be the leader of themselves um, and potentially the leader of a family. Some people are meant to be the leaders of a giant multinational corporation and not everyone is, is cut out for that and that's totally fine. It's, it's quite frankly a, a lonely and shitty job in a lot of ways. So, um, yeah. but I do think leadership can be expressed in many ways and, and maybe being a leader in the product design community, right, which is your expertise can, can uh, be that form of leadership for you. It, it could be in terms of like being a guru. It could be in terms of writing a book or it could be simpler than that. It could be, for instance, becoming, um, you know, a product design uh, leader or manager at a company, um, running a small team and being a phenomenal mentor, trainer uh, and manager to a handful of folks and kind of like young up and coming product designers and and teaching them how to be excellent. And I bet you'd in fact get a lot of satisfaction out of something like that if kind of the mentorship is in your heart and that's something that really kind of appeals to you. I don't think it's the thing itself that you need to find in terms of what the expression is. Uh, if it's running a small team, if it's writing a book, those are the goals, right? I think what's more important for you is to ascertain what your values are, right? When you're clear about what your values are, the goals naturally um, come out or emanate out of that, right? So what I would encourage you to explore, and we're starting to obviously explore it together on this call, is what are the things that are really important to me? What do I want to stand for, right? 10 years from now, in terms of the rest of my life, what do I, and that's why those, these questions are useful prompts. Like, what do I want other people to say about me? Right, it's not just, oh, he was a leader, but what kind of leader were you, right? Like if you were imagining running a team of product designers, like what would they say about you, right? In terms of like, oh, is he a good teacher? Uh, he genuinely cares about my well-being. Um, he's at the top of the field in terms of knowing the latest techniques. Like what are the elements that people would be, you know, uh, respect you for? And I think those highlight essentially what your values are. It could be around innovation, for instance, if it's being the best or the top of the field. It could be around, um, you know, contribution or service, right? In terms of wanting to train the next generation. Um, it could be around um, kind of artistic expression, right? Which is like the thing, maybe it's the design itself that you really love and uh, having an outlet for creativity and expression, being able to share that with other people. But I would encourage you to think about that and, and almost like really hone and refine what your values are, right? Because I think if you're very clear about what your values are, you can find many different ways of expressing that value. Um, and that's the nice thing about values is as opposed to a goal, which is I need to write a book. And if I'm 
don't write the book, I don't feel satisfied. If I write the book, then I don't know, hopefully I feel satisfied and maybe you don't after you write it. Uh, a value can be lived uh, and expressed in any given moment, right? So let's take a concrete example of that. If you decide uh, service is the thing that really like is your value, like I wanna, I wanna give back uh, and I wanna train other people, you can find many ways of serving people. Like right now, it could just be, you know, uh, uh, finding someone to mentor, right? Who wants to become a product designer and you spend an hour a week with them, uh, just teaching them tools of the trade or giving them advice about how to find a job or all that kinds of stuff. And that can be something you can do literally right now, right? In any given moment or in your existing product design consulting position, figuring out how can I leverage sort of service or mentorship as part of what I do. The goals can vary, but the but it's always done out of the expression of that value. And so whenever I hear people say, coming back to your original question, I don't know what sort of my motivation, motivation. is. Uh, the I question is, that. how can you find what your values are? Because your values are essentially the roadmap, the blueprint, the compass for where you want to head in life. And they should really be more intrinsically motivated um, that's why money is not a value. Money is a goal. So is that is that helpful as like a way of thinking about it that may be a little bit different than how you've been approaching it? Yeah, no, that's super helpful. It's very, very helpful. I th yeah, definitely something I need. I know I need to explore further. Maybe even um, come up with a statement is what I would I would suggest. It could be a couple bullet points, could be a paragraph, but think about, like I said, who do I want to be less than what do I want to do. If you know who you want to be, the what you will want to do will naturally come as an outgrowth to that, right? But have a very clear, almost like vision statement, personal statement, mission statement of who do I want to be uh, as a person, as a professional. People that I know, quite frankly, that are the most motivated, they're people who often have made their money, right? They've, they've, like, they've almost taken the extrinsic out of the table. They've achieved all the success that they want, but they're they're still kind of young. They're not at retirement age, and they're like, "What the hell do I do for the next 30 years?" Right? And it's like, I don't. Money doesn't have to be it. So what do I do? That's when they become very intrinsically motivated. And they're like, "What is my contribution to whether it's my family, my society, my community, my professional community, whatever it is?" Uh, and then they they actually work harder. But it's not for the money. It's for these other reasons. And in a lot of ways, it, they they shift their mindset from this is something I have to do. This is something I must do. This is something I should do, right? Which are not, these are like very external, extrinsic kind of things to, this is something I want to do. And it is my choice because I could be sitting on a beach and retired, but I I, I don't, I wouldn't feel satisfied doing that. I feel too young. I feel like I'm, I'm letting my strengths and talents and God-given gifts go to waste if I do that. Now take intrinsic motivation to get to, from where you are in your thirties to where who you want to be in your 40s. And I think that'll be a very positive driving force. Yeah, sounds really good. I think that there's really, really good advice. And I think part of the problem is that paradox of choice. You know, you get to a point mm -hmm. where you've got the paths you think you can go down now. And you, you know, whereas back in the 20s, you can, it's kind of just grab what you can. I hear your story very often, especially when people kind of enter mid-career. They get quite frankly very good at what they're doing, right? They're like, I've been doing this for five, 10 years now. I'm, I'm competent at what I'm doing. People in fact hire me as a consultant to do what I'm doing because I'm good enough to, to do it freelance or teach other people how to do it. Um, but that the downside of that is, you know, uh, the, the natural enjoyment that comes from learning a skill and trap and crap becomes like, oh, I've been doing, I've done this so many times. It's like copy, paste, rinse and repeat. So yeah. it sounds like to me, you gotta, you gotta find something and it doesn't mean you need to quit your job tomorrow, but like, I, I, I think part of your satisfaction will come from a bigger challenge, right? So you gotta figure out how to stretch yourself. And I think, by the way, this is such generally good advice for men. Men are most satisfied when they're challenged. Um, and you should, you should kind of like force yourself to get outside of your comfort zone. It's so funny because as guys, we spend so much of our early lives just trying to, um, you know, get to some point of stability, right? Um, and, and it's like that you don't, you're not thinking about challenge because life is already challenging enough being a man in your twenties and just trying to find your way in life. Fortunately, when you got to get to the point that you are in, um, you know, you overcome some of those challenges and you're like, great, I should be satisfied. And you find yourself in a very, exactly the position that you're in now. And you're like, wait a minute, I, I kind of got what I wanted, but somehow I'm not as happy or satisfied as I thought I would be. 
And it's not because, uh, you know, money or success isn't satisfying. It's that great, you've achieved that, but you still need challenge in your life because, you know, that's how that's how we, we learn and grow. So I, I would say maybe figure out if there's new skills that you want to learn that you haven't learned. Uh, and maybe that's the part that's going to be challenging. It could be new responsibilities, which is if you're kind of working a little bit more as a consultant, which is generally more solo, maybe it's um, doing a little bit more management if you like doing that or you like to learn how to do that. Um, or third, it could be a little bit more of this community contribution, right? Which is how can I contribute to the broad product design community at large, whether that's writing, speaking, blogging, social media, et cetera, to kind of become a thought leader, right, in the space. And yeah. that could be another challenge. You could stay, in fact, in your same job, but you could say, I'm going to find my challenge in kind of building my brand around product design, building a community around it, whatever it is that that satisfies you. But I think you got to find something that that challenges you a little bit more than what you are now. And you always want to find that kind of sweet spot. I, I might have mentioned this in the previous show, um, Mihaly Csikszentmihalyi, the guy who um, popularized the concept of flow, talked about flow really comes from when your skills meet the challenge level, right? It has to be commensurate to it. The problem is as we get better and better, you have to make it more and more challenging. Otherwise you get bored and you don't grow. So think about that too a little bit in terms of your current position or potentially extracurricular things that you can do above and beyond your position to feel a little bit more challenged and stretch yourself. Um, and I, I, I bet you that if you do, some of that motivation that you felt at 20 will come back. Yeah, that's really practical advice. I appreciate that.